Welcome to the Newton tutorial series. I'm Mike Cruz with AC Tech and in this tutorial I'm going to show you how to run your simulations after you've created your input files. So before I even run the simulation, when I think I'm finished my file and I'm ready to run it, I always go through and check a few key parameters to make sure I didn't make a silly mistake. So on my general variables page I always check the simulation time and I check that I set my max expected velocity and I check that you know if I wanted to save the triangle or particle force in work data did I remember to turn that on and I check my file name. And then I'll go to the my material properties and say well did I remember to set my friction level accordingly maybe this was supposed to be a high friction case but but I had left the friction settings at low so maybe I want to go ahead and change those around to something else. And then I'll go over to my geometry and say, well, for any layers that I imported, did I remember to set my, my override my surface friction values? Did I uh, remember to mesh up my triangles if I was recording where? Then I go over to my particle generation and say, well, did I make sure that I actually generated my material? Because maybe I spent a whole bunch of time fiddling around trying to position the particles properly but maybe I, I never went through and generated a whole set maybe I had forgot I kept canceling the generation before it finished so I'll look at that output tab and make sure you know am I running 50,000 or 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 200,000 particles are they all generated and then after that I know that I've I've set up my input file and I'm ready to go so there's two different ways that you can run your simulation you can either go up to the solver menu and click solver run and that will start the simulation or you can open up a file queue and create a uh, create a list of simulations that will run in sequence up to 10 so one thing to note is that if i go to my menu and go solver run uh, newton will start the simulation in single file mode which means that you can no longer use the file queue because you've already started just a single simulation so if you want to use the file queue you need to go to file open queue and you need to add those files that you want to that you want to run for the simulation. So if I go ahead and add these list of test files that I prepared. So on my file queue window, there's the add file and I can remove the selected file if I want. I can move files up, I can move them down, I can clear the whole queue. And then on the right, I have buttons to run the simulations, which I'll do. Then once I start the simulation running, now I can, if I want, I can skip to the next simulation. Maybe I only wanted to run a few seconds of this, so I can skip to the next one. Or if I want to cancel all of them, I can just stop all the simulations. Let's go ahead and skip. Uh, let's go ahead and skip. You can see that it tried to run two of these files. It runs these files in order. It'll open up the input file located here and it will try and run that file and with these two files that it found errors it said there's no triangles in this file so I can't run a simulation so rather than stopping and throwing an error throwing an info a pop-up box error it just skip the file and kept going so that you're not wasting any time and when you come back and look at the queue you can see that oh these two files did not get run because of these errors there we go and there was a layer move profile error for that one. So if you go to the manual, there's a section in here, file queuing. And it shows a screenshot of basically this exact same file queue with these same simulations. So underneath that uh, image, there's a list of all the possible errors that you could get in that file queue. And it'll tell you, oh, you know, no particles. The input file had no generated clusters or number of clusters greater than license type. So someone had created this input file with a different version of Newton or a different license that allows more clusters, but your license does not have enough clusters, so you can't run it. You would have to regenerate that material. So then, when I actually go and let's open up a different file. Let's open up uh, this wear test file. This is the same file we've been working with in, in several of these tutorials. So if I go ahead and run this file, right at the top, when it starts the simulation running, it, it changes the, the name of the file to the location for these files. So I had opened up I had opened up this input file in some random location on my hard drive. But as soon as I hit solver run, it immediately creates a copy of that input file in the location that I've specified. 
So this was that same directory that I set up in the file itself. So if I go there, zzz test, where test 222, here are the basic files that it creates at the start. So what I've got, I've got my input file, just made a copy of it, so I always have it in case it gets deleted from the other location where I where I opened it up. There's my, my uncompressed playback file, my, re, my current restart file, and then there's this CSV file that uh, contains data, it contains information that's printed out from the simulation and a separate tutorial is going to discuss the the information in that CSV file but for the most part it's just a, a, a bunch of general parameters you know friction settings and, and and friction arrays and time step data that that most of it you can access directly from within Newton this will contain your layer forces um, your layer forces for the total layer and and you can do that within from within Newton as um, as I've probably shown you in a previous tutorial and it will I'll also show you again in the post-processing tutorial so the CSV file is more for reference or, or checking if you think, well, did I forget to set a parameter properly or, or something like that. So now if I want to, if I try and double click to open this file, Newton is going to try and open it, but it's going to throw an error saying, no, the, the file's in use, I can't open it right now. No, nope, it's in use. But what you could do instead is, even while this is, while this is creating, I don't even have to pause the simulation, I can just say copy and then paste and it's going to basically copy however much of the file has been created so far and now that file is not being used so I could go ahead and just open that right up while the simulation's running so when I do that as soon as it opens up it will tell you hey this playback file is incomplete because it knows that we, we only have half a file here but I can still use it just like I would any other playback file so that's a handy way where, you know, if you're running a long simulation but you still want to look at the flow pattern from, you know, the last 10 seconds or whatever, you can go ahead and open up a copy of the file and it'll work just fine. Now what if I had said, well, let's go solver stop. What if I had realized that I made a mistake right here and I wanted to change some parameter? I didn't generate enough material or it was in the wrong spot or I had uh, the wrong friction level set whatever I can just go ahead and say solver stop go back to my thing and change it and I can go ahead and say solver run again so now what this did is it now creates a second set of files it's created a second set of files in that same folder because it said oh well the, all the file information all the file names they were all still set exactly the same but when it went to start the simulation it said it's it saw that there was already files with that name so it went ahead and ignored those files and created an append and and uh, it appended a dash 2 onto the end and this will go all the way up to you know dash 10000 if you had done that but Obviously, I wouldn't want to have two sets of useless files. Before running this the second time, I would have gone in here and said, well, let's just, let's just go ahead and delete all that data because I don't want it. And that, then it won't even append the, the, um, that dash 2 onto the end of it. So while the file is running, you can still do all this, pretty much all the same manipulation that you can in post-processing mode. You can't look at work or force you can't do any any force summaries or anything like that uh... you can't do you can't look at particle work or particle forces either but the most basic the, the rest of everything else you can do you could set up clip planes if you wanted to you could uh... you know change your color modes and your transparency levels anything you want it's not going to affect the simulation because what we're doing here is purely purely um... manipulating the the way we are viewing the simulation but as far as actually changing the results of the simulation we can't do any of that none of this is going to change those results so you can set up whatever kind of views you want you can save views if you want you can even go up here to the solver menu you can say save current frame so that'll go ahead and save a playback frame just like when you're in playback file mode and you want to save a, a single frame PBF you can just do that right here save current frame it'll pause the simulation allow you to save your frame and then just continue right on with the simulation you can go ahead and use any of those same, you know, surface and orbit commands if I wanted to. So we can also, there's one other handy feature, this material generation stop time. So in my simulation, I had set up, say, 
30 seconds of material generation. But what if I was doing a simulation where I was trying to, you know, fill up an ore pass or fill up some closed surface? I, I said, well, if I know that I'm trying to fill up this, say, large cylinder, and I know that I can calculate the amount of material that it should take to fill that up, and then I can generate that proper amount of material as well. But maybe I was slightly off in my assumption of the material volume or the material size, or, or maybe I had miscalculated the size of the cylinder. Well, what you can do is you can go into here, into this menu, and click on Material Generation Stop Time. And that will allow you to, to change this dot, the end time for your material generation. So you can see right now it's going to generate material all the way up to 29 seconds. But if I wanted to, I could say, well, I, I, I want to stop this material generation right now. So I could just say, well, my new generation end time, I call it 9.4. I can call it one second, anything less than, than the current time, and it's just going to stop generating right now. Now it says, here's my current time, and I still have the same input time. So I click OK. Well, as soon as it gets down there, you'll see that it's not going to generate any more material because we've basically said, nope, I, I want you to skip all the rest of that generation. I don't want to worry about it. But maybe I just wanted to temporarily stop the generation because I wanted to empty out this belt, and then I want to start it again. Well, I could just go back in here again, and I could reset this and say, well, let's put it back to, let's put it back to 900 seconds. And I'll say, oh, well, obviously the max here is 29.7. It'll reset it to that. So now you'll see, as soon as it gets to the next drop time, it'll drop one. So the couple of layers that it should have dropped in between these two times are completely ignored. You've lost them forever. But it will pick up where it had left off and keep generating material there. So I think that pretty much covers basic running your simulation and and the file types that it's going to spit out here. So if there are any other questions, go ahead and consult the manual. There's some information about running a simulation in there. Or go ahead and send us an email if you, if you want to info at actech.com. Thanks.